Hey, Brie. Hey. So what's cracking? Are we starting a podcast or what? We're starting a podcast. But it's more than a podcast. I'm really excited for this podcast um, because, one, I get to work on it with Sesana, the smart and beautiful and talented Sesana. Um, great co-host. And then... Two, I'm excited because we get to bring on one of my favorite people in the world Hi. from the show, Rachel <laughs> Kirkconnell. Hi, guys. Rachel and I had um, the opportunity to date the same person. How very, many people can say that? You know what? Not many, but I will say I'm, I'm actually thankful for it because it brought me you. I'm so Even thankful it's so for weird. it. You know, it's but like. I think we we laugh about it now because I think like one of our first conversations was how like I reached out to you and I was like I don't know how you're feeling but like I love you so much and like I still want to like have a relationship with you yeah and you were like I didn't know how I would feel either but I didn't even know the guy yeah (laughs) like like, well we think we I mean I didn't even know him at the time either I feel like you and I talked about this while we were filming was like at the end of the day, you're better off making friends with the people that you're here with because you have yeah, the probability less than alone. 1% chance of ending up with the guy at the end. Yeah. So you might as well mm-hmm. come and That's leave That's actually more than, it's 1 in 34. Yeah. Sorry, not to throw statistics So is you. it less than 1%? No, it's 1 34th. How, what percentage is that? Look it up. Let's look it up right now. We actually have stat- statistics. We do. It's oh my gosh, really? Three. It's what? It's almost Point oh three. It's three percent. Okay, so I, I was at like, that doesn't. Sound, yeah, I was at far off. No, I was. Well, off. you know what? We're here with the ninety-seven percent, and here with the three <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah, but guess what? Bree's just thriving just as much as the rest of us right now. I mean, she it's, just got back from Italy I with her boyfriend. From Italy. We all have. I think. I think the show in of itself, and we'll do another episode on this, but I think the show in of, in of itself is just sometimes it, this experience is iffy about what you're going to go in and what type of experience that you're going to have. And mm-hmm. I can confidently say yeah. that while I would never do it again and I would not encourage people Same. to do it again, <laughs> I am so thankful for it. Yeah. It changed my I mean, life I in ways that were thing. unimaginable. Matt and I say the exact same thing. It's like, would we go through that again? Of course not. But we cannot even like be mad about everything that we went through both as a couple and individually because mm-hmm. like we're literally where we are today because of the show. So like we can't. Yeah. We honestly can't have anything to say except like thank you. 100%. You know? What's the biggest thing that you feel like changed about you guys before and after the show? I, I mean, mean everything. My whole life. Yeah. Literally your entire life. Right? I mean, what about you? Yeah, my entire life. I, I feel mean, like you kind of like I this is me telling track. Matt this and I'll tell him in person whenever I see him next, but mm-hmm. Matt allowed me to date out like to date black men mm-hmm. because I had never you dated never had? no I didn't know that not seriously yeah anyways um it was literally because of Matt that I reached out to AO wow that's so crazy so then you can at least say like hey Matt thanks for Matt send me home <laughs> Matt if you're listening which you will people obviously. who love Matt <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> We're actually only here just to talk about Matt. We're not talking about ourselves at all. Yep. No. All right. Next question about Matt. Uh, but, oh, no, I do. Wait, I do have a question, though, is because whenever we were on the show, so it's coming up on two years ago, which is kind yeah, of Yeah, we were just talking about this before we started. Yeah. We, what is it? August like, something. Yeah. August 5th now? That we went to go film. No, we, we went literally a month ago or Mm -hmm. September end of September two years ago we were locked away in the highest room in the (laughs) Tulsa in Nemo colon yeah and finding Nemo yeah and yeah Nemo yeah wait wait what did we call it we called it um remember how it was called the chateau we called it the matto Oh, the Matto. We called it wow. the Matto. This is like really bringing up memories. For yeah. Me. We were locked away in the Matto for like 10 COVID? days during COVID. Yeah. We were locked away for 10 days. Um, they took our phones after like three days. So we were really locked away. Like I had yeah. nothing. And then that's when you really go crazy. And I'm like, I can't believe yeah. I'm actually about to do this. Yeah. And then we started filming like the first night was, I think, October 10th. Yeah. So two years ago, mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Who was so the last crazy. person you texted? 
from the show? No, from before oh, they took your phone away. I think it was, I mean, it was probably either like someone from my family or I do remember my friends, one of my friends from college. I really didn't, I mean, I don't know who you told, but I was like scared because they were like, you can't tell anyone. So yeah. I told two of my friends. I had Same. like 20. Same. And, or like 20 that I wanted to tell. Yeah. But was scared to. So one of them was like, why does it say Rachel's in Pennsylvania? And like, <laughs> I like. And then your phone was gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yikes. That's. Yeah. I mean, I had so friends. So I think they found out after that. I had but. friends not find out until my photo was released. Yeah. Like, I think. Same. When did yeah. I find out? You Probably. Well, no, you knew I was going on. I knew because, because our mutual friend. Brie had to friend. tell Casey and then Casey had to yeah. tell Kira. <laughs> so Brie was my number one confidant <laughs> who you clearly can't trust. <laughs> Wait, that's your friend who came on, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, Crazy. yes. But I knew that was going to happen. Um, no, I, I, so many of my close friends did not find out until yeah. I really did keep it like very lips locked. Me and too. I they even scare kept you the ending not until lips, I kept the ending very tight mm -hmm. until the end. Because I also wanted to throw people off. I was yeah, like, I like, obviously. I might be engaged. <laughs> well, you don't... <laughs> You didn't want them to know you were part of the 97%. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No. That is the hardest part is losing. And I will go to bat, and I've said this before, but the hardest part is really not, is losing. It's just like losing. Actually, oh, it's it's literally just being like, like, it's, I, I think about the that all the time. Was, it's the rejection. The, it's not the well, fact no, that no, like. No, 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 no. For what? me, the rejection was not, the rejection was fine. I don't mind yeah. getting rejected. I, you, I will. I'm happy. I can handle rejection. Yeah. It's losing. Yeah. But it's not a competition. No, I'm agreeing with but you. But I felt like it was I'm a agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. Like, I think a lot of people that half the reason they're crying on the way home in that limo or the car that picks you up is just because, like, they didn't end up being the one. That's it. Yeah. Like, and oh, that was chosen. Yeah. I think that's yeah. it. Like, because, like, when they get home, I think, like, it's probably really, I, can't, I mean, I'm talking out of my butt right now because, like, I don't She's know. She's like, I can't relate with being a loser. <laughs> no, I don't know. I no, wasn't there. I but wasn't I'm honestly just saying, like, I feel like, because we've had that conversation. I've talked to, like, I, I met up with Chelsea, like, right when I got home. Yeah. And we went to dinner. And she was, like, beaming, you know? She was yeah. like, that was so fun. Like, who could, you <laughs> know, like, like, I don't even think it, but I'm sure in the moment when she was going home, like, she was obviously sad, but... I feel like half the reason we were probably sad or people were probably sad going home was because like they were probably like, well, summer camp's over, you know, Literally, like, it yeah. felt like like we hung out with each other, obviously way more than we hung out with Matt. Yeah. And like half the reason, like I was crying at some rose ceremonies because I was having to say bye to people that I knew oh I was going to see for like, w were we not like we were yeah. so like Cr sad. sad. I was sad. Yeah, and I think go. that was half the reason. Like, I was so sad when you left because I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to see Brie for so long. I didn't see you Towards for so long. End. Yeah, it was a very long time. Yeah. And how was the dynamic, though? Did you ever still think, like, this person is forming an emotional connection with the guy I really like, too? You I, would know more than that. I don't know how I did it because, like, I do, I will, like, fully admit, like, I am a jealous person to an extent, like, I try not to, like, let it get unhealthy in a way, mm -hmm. but I definitely, like, if I, if I see Matt, like, you know, talking to some random girl, I'm like, who's that girl? <laughs> you know, and then it could be, like, his, like, best friend's sister or something, I'm like, all right, she gets a pass, fine. but, like, she's my cousin. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, all right, fine, I guess I'll let your cousin slide, but, like, but for the most part, like in the show, I don't know how, but I felt like all of us did a really good job of separating or like what what did we always say? Car compartmentalizing, compartmentalizing our yeah. relationships with like each other and with Matt. Like it honestly never registered with me that like I was like becoming really good friends with Bree. And then we were also going on dates with the same guy <laughs> like with like two days apart, not even a day apart. Overnights. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I don't know well, why it never read. I, I don't know. Well, what did you? Know. Maybe I just never let myself. Well, and that was the thing, though, is like, I think the, it was key to compartmentalize. Otherwise, you would have gone crazy. Spiral. Yeah. And, and I, I feel I like it's an opportunity for them to take advantage of your mindset mm -hmm. whenever you're down and Who's whenever them? you're really down. The producers. Yeah. And you felt like they. I definitely spiraled um, during Fantasy Suites. Like, yeah. I. You know how, like, 
Susie was like literally going down. Did you watch Clayton's season? And she's like no, going down I the didn't. staircase and she's like, if he slept with other girls, like I'm going home. Like she was going crazy. Like she's going mm. straight crazy or so like the show showed. Yeah. Um, like that was me. Like they, I think they purposely held me last to like make me go crazy. Yeah. And they did a great job. I went crazy. Yeah. I was like, so not okay. Running on three hours of sleep you know, locked away in a room, yeah. like just like all you're left with no one, but yourself and your thoughts. And I have this really bad habit of always thinking the worst. Yeah. So like, I'm thinking like, well, his mind's changed. Like I'm probably going to show up to this date or not even change, but just like decided, I guess, wow. you know, yeah. mm-hmm. and whether it was like, either it was me or he changed his mind or it wasn't me. And now it can never be me. Cause he's like decided now. And so I thought I was, like, going to be walking up to that date, and he's going to be like, yeah, it's over. Or he was going to be leading me on just for the show, then sending me home, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like we all kind of wanted that reassurance. Like, we all, I think, were kind of, like, poking at, like, give me an answer. Mm -hmm. And, like, he did a great job of reassuring me. Like, I thought I was like, okay, it has to be me from what he's saying, blah, blah, blah. But then, like, we'd all get together, and I feel like a lot of girls said, Oh, I got so reassured today. Yeah. To where it makes you second guess yourself. So then I'm thinking like, well, I felt I felt good about us until now. This is where whenever people ask like, were you blindsided? And I say yes. Not even necessarily because I was like, Matt, Matt is going to choose me because Matt loves me. Yeah. In my mind, I had already told myself, Matt is going to choose me because this is, like, the only, like, logical option. This is the only logical next I thought he was going to choose you. Like, I put we my all producer did. hat on. If you asked on. any of the girls, we were like, it's well, Matt and I, Because this is what I was doing. I put my producer hat on, and I was like, we have to figure out how the way this show is going to end. And yeah. we will do everything in our power to make sure he does not end up with Rachel. And that's what I kept telling why, myself. Why? 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 Well, if I'm speaking personally for myself, I felt like having we know that he was marketed as the first black bachelor whether he was consenting to that or not which i think was a really big step but if as a producer you still do have to take like inventory of the cultural environment and your awareness and surroundings of what's happening culturally and in my, in my mind i kept telling myself there's no way they couldn't there's no way they would not let him end up with someone who wasn't black Wow. because of the show and if you and think about true. it it's your show it's your job true. it is literally She's your right. job to tell a cohesive story from start to finish and yes there are obstacles and yes there are challenges and heartbreaks and but at the end of, at the end of the day love prevails all and mm-hmm. I was so strongly convinced that they were going to make this the one where black love prevailed wow. they I'd... wanted that it was so important for them to portray that with yeah. everything that was going on in the world I mean obviously it's been going on now for forever but like it was at a it was at a peak you know yeah and I thought the same thing and and like talking to Matt about it afterwards yeah you were spot on yeah they did want that yeah and not only did I feel that too and so I was just waiting like I was just waiting for it but now talking with Matt about it like they they did do like They'd go to probably miles. everything they could to like to get us to not be together because they didn't want us to be get together. And you know what's funny is when we finally and like I mean obviously I have Matt to thank for even just being together at this point because he just put his foot down. You know like yeah. he was like this is what works. This is who I want to be with. And sorry if this doesn't like like you Align go back home and write your storyboard. One hundred percent. Um. Because he did say, he was like, as soon as, like, I knew, like, I let them know because I knew that they were going to have to make it work. And um, and so you're spot on with that. But, yeah, it's just it's just crazy how well, they, make, they try to make it work like I'll that. I'll also they, say. This is what I was trying to say. At the finale, when we were mm. wrapping filming up, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. We, they couldn't have been more disappointed like he handed me that final rose and as we're like doing our final interview they're literally like breaking apart the the set around (laughs) us like not one single person like came yeah not one single person like came and was like congrats or just like you know like i'm happy for you guys didn't even say bye like 
there were people that <laughs> I spent two months with that <laughs> packed it up and were like, well, we failed. Failure of a season. <laughs> and it hadn't even aired yet, you know? <laughs> Like, that's how it felt. Insane. Yeah. This is why so people right. ask me, like, did you know? I was like, no, because I was so sure that this, they were going to follow the storyline. And this is they where tried. I also they feel like hardest. things And then got, think about it. They didn't even get an engagement. <laughs> they yeah. They were breaking that was down the, the set. That they were like, actually, actually, Rachel, too, I promise it's you. It's not because they didn't want him to be with you. It's because they didn't get what they wanted out of the end, yeah. which ultimately was the engagement period. And But he wasn't going to get yeah. engaged with anyone, who, regardless of who he ended up no. with. But... It, it also it also made this is also something I have to acknowledge or feel like I have the privilege because I also felt like they were going to let him either end up with or push him to choose Michelle or I at the end because they, yeah they we did. were the most palatable because we're mixed we're biracial yeah. and they were like wow. okay our audience can handle that our swallow audience it. will will be able to to swallow this a and, little bit easier yeah and that was this was never aired um but michelle and i talked to afr mm. and she kind of even like we touched on that she was like what's afr sorry so afr is um what is it after the after final, the final oh. yes um so it's the after show and it's actually filmed in like real time pretty much usually it's live but because of covid and whatnot it wasn't live for us Thank God, because Matt, no joke, took like 10 minutes to answer each question. Like, we wouldn't have gotten anything done because it would have just been the commercial. It would have been like this <laughs> for 10 minutes. Wait, he was like, just right. sitting, being yes. silent? Yes. Yeah. And like, I don't know, probably just because he was trying to figure out the perfect things to say because he was under so much pressure. Yeah. So it was so hard for him. Like, I'll never forget that because I felt so bad. And that's half the reason, like, if you watch it back, I'm, like, <laughs> trying to come from and be like, Matt, just say something. And then he's, like, pulling away because he's, like, you can't touch me right I now. I specifically remember <laughs> this. Yes. <laughs> and Did everyone's, like, everyone's like, oh, my gosh, he's disgusted with her. Yeah, of course that wasn't, like, the case. Like, not that. But you know what's funny is everyone thinks, like, we were faking that, too. Crazy. Yeah, that was not fake. People were, like, they faked breaking up. Like, no. All right, here you're hearing it first, like right here. He dumped me. Okay, everyone. Like, so you were real. part of the ninety-seven percent. I was. Wow. So really, it's a hundred percent. Really, it was a hundred percent. It was a hundred percent. He dumped. No he broke up with all one hundred percent. He did. He actually did. He actually did. Yeah. Actually, wow. we have to think about the the girls that sent themselves home. Three girls sent well, themselves home. So, yeah. anyways. <laughs> He yeah, took a long time to answer the questions. Oh, me and Michelle, though. Yeah. So me and Michelle, we were, we were talking, and she was basically just saying, like, talking about the audience itself. And she was like, how crazy is it that everything that happened this season with you and with the host and everyone, like, you still have all of these followers. You still have all of these supporters. Mm. You still have people defending you. And here we are, and, you know, everyone else in the top five yeah. was interracial or mixed. Bi yeah. Yeah, biracial. And, um, and, you know, like no one was, and I, can't, I don't even like talking about it, but she was basically saying like, we're not even like at the level you are and why do you think that is? Mm -hmm. She was basically saying like, it's, it's the audience. Like it's not just you, but this entire audience of the show. Right is some type of way yeah. to where like not only are they following you and defending you and supporting you, but they don't even have the decency to like support yeah. us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I will even, so I agree with you on that. It was it's also so true. That's the franchise. And if you look at, and if you look at, um, I even felt bad with Michelle's season because obviously the seasons have been going like this every time they're aired. Mm -hmm. So yes, Katie's um, like viewer wise did better. But even if you look at follower wise, mm -hmm. like Gabby and Rachel are doing very well. Yeah. And I think I really do think that just goes to show you that like like that audience, like why why are they choosing to follow Gabby and Rachel over right. Michelle or anyone else any other woman of color that was on the season previously, especially a lead though, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's just it's really crazy when yeah. you look at it. So I agree with you, and that was their that was like their thing with Matt's season. They were like, "We can we can do this," but sadly, I also think it wasn't for Matt. It wasn't for any person of color. It was for themselves to try and, of course, monetize off of like what was happening in the world. Yeah, wow. and yeah. they obviously didn't do a great job with it. 
Well, we talked about this on our episode. It was like, yeah, it backfired. This is, yeah, their response to the Black Lives Matter movement. Someone in a different state getting murdered for being black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were like, let's get a black lead on the show. Yeah. And do you feel like you were supported as a black contestant as well? I mean, I didn't. <laughs> I went on a reality TV show. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> you can't go on a reality TV show and say, I'm going to be supported as a black contestant. That doesn't exist in America. Sorry mm -hmm. to anyone who thinks they're going on a reality TV show to be supported as a black woman. And, you know, that's why in my mind I put on, it was easy for me to put on my producer hat. And that's what I was about to say. They'll, they'll support you as far as what benefits them. Exactly. And that's probably the only reason you thought like this could work out for me is because exactly. it helps them. Yeah. Exactly. So coming off the show, and I know you mentioned it, you mentioned the controversy with the host. Mm -hmm. um, you came under fire for racially insensitive, insensitive photos that surfaced of you online when you were in college. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was controversy surrounding that season because of those photos and because you were on a re really big, big reality show of dating the first black bachelor. Mm -hmm. um, you've since issued multiple apologies and shared on numerous occasions how regretful you are of what happened. And now that I've gotten the chance to know you fairly well since coming off the show, I kind of wanted to back up a little bit and reflect on what you felt two years coming off of the show. Um, I would like to say as someone that isn't the biggest Bachelor fan, knowing you <laughs> before you've been on the show and knowing you since you've come after, we had just like an amazing conversation about who you are and really bringing your personality to light as well. So what was going through your mind mentally when that happened? I, I like, not that I hate talking about it, but I, I honestly like, I feel bad talking about like what I went through only because like I don't want to like make myself a victim in any way or like center myself with it because like when all of that was going on yes like that was like easily like the darkest time in my life but like we talked about this and like mm -hmm. it overshadowed the entire season including like every other woman that was there mm -hmm. and once like that all registered it honestly like made it even worse because I was like this ruined everyone's entire journey with it I hate the word journey because of the show <laughs> but I guess experience like yeah like it overshadowed everyone's experience with it like anytime anyone was being asked about the show or anything it was so what do you think about what the host said about this and Rachel and blah 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 and it's like why is that the only thing that you guys think? And, like, of course, it's just clickbait and it's the headlines and whatnot. But, like, it was just really sad that all of these women got, like, so overlooked with, like, just, like, getting – or people getting to know who they were and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, like, that was just hard on its own. And then just, you know, everyone – it was weird living that life, like, you know, three, four years ago – when it got resurfaced and then already having gone through all of that. And, and another thing is, is like, this is the first time I've ever saying this. I did mm -hmm. say this on AFR and of course I didn't show it, but there was, there wasn't a party like everyone says there was. Yeah. Um, I didn't go like celebrate whatever everyone was trying to say there was no parade I've seen crazy stuff crazy stuff I'm sure you have I've seen crazy stuff like people are saying yeah. like there was reenactments parties parades people were dressing like I don't know just crazy stuff and um I guess that was hard just like reading that and like saying like okay no that's not what it was but I will say like I also could have known I could have known the history of that fraternity and I could have known what like why we were even wearing those dresses and whatnot because the whole thing was like us girls going to literally renting these dresses just to go get photos in them it was like prom yeah like how that's so crazy to think about now after just seeing like just really like realizing what that was even before the show I, I realized like 
what that was and what that fraternity represented and everything. And I had gone through that, you know, personally already. So I guess it was a big deal just like having to relive that. But then like everyone's, of course, they're learning about it for the first time. So it's happening in real life for them. So they also think like that's still who I am. Yeah. And, and like that includes like all the women on the show too. So I, I spoke to some women and they were like, why'd you even come on the show? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were like, why did you even come on the show knowing that you were about to potentially like be with the first black bachelor knowing like, this is what, this is who you were. And that's mm -hmm. what really hurt. Cause I was like, yeah, but it's not this who is, I am. Yeah. You know? So when you say it's not who you are, can you, can you just say what the fraternity represents and kind of what the event was? Yeah. Well, so, so from my understanding, obviously the, the fraternity KA, um, who the leader I think was Robert E. Lee. Well, like, and it was my neighbor. He, he'd asked me like last minute and he was like, will you go with me? He was a little sweetheart. And I was like, yeah, I would love to go with you. And it was mm -hmm. a beach trip. And it was, um, I think it was at Hilton Head that year. And mm -hmm. so that was the formal, was just going to the beach for the weekend. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that Wednesday is when, you know, you go take those photos and whatnot. And I guess realizing that afterwards, some big schools, because I think it was banned in two, 2016, I want to say. And mm -hmm. I think that happened in 2018. So I don't even think, I, I think I was a freshman when it had gotten banned. Yeah. And um, I didn't know any of that. I hadn't gone till my junior year. That was the one and only time that I was invited and went and whatnot. And um, we, I went to a really small school. I'm not, I hate even like talking about it as if it's like me making an excuse because I could have easily known all of this. Um, but I guess that was a real thing. Like they, there were schools that would have parties and whatnot. And um I don't even, I don't know, like, I guess they would just, um, it's really it's hard to say. It's really hard to say, yeah. Because, it's tradition. Because I just didn't, it didn't happen at my school, and so I was, like, oblivious, sadly. Like, it's really hard to, like, sit here and be like, I didn't know, because um, I easily could have known. I could have been like, why do we even wear these? Like, why do we, why do I, like, spend all this money to rent a dress for, a couple days just to get some photos in it that's so ridiculous and like obviously everyone knows at this point like what they represented and everything so I'm sitting here thinking like and I barely had or at least like our school like I said like we were in the middle of Georgia we were smaller we weren't like our demographics and whatnot like there weren't mm -hmm. a lot of people of color um and it was just like it's just crazy to think, like, Matt Matt put it so well. He was like, I don't even think I would have been. Well, and this is what's crazy. He he did say at Wake Forest, like, he was like, I wasn't even allowed at those fraternities. Yeah. And um, Because? Because he was black. And, um, mm. or so he, so he says, they say it was because he was a football player. Yeah. That's what I, or, which that is was like, my what thought. is that reason? Don't football play, aren't they like so, have social clout? So, oh, that was my thought was that he couldn't go because he was a football player. Well, that's what they say. But then he would say like, but then like the baseball players and lacrosse players would show up and they're white and they'd be like, oh man, come on in. Mm. So he was like, so what is it at that point? Because like they would be like, you're you're a football player and like then you could think like oh like the football player is going to show up and all the girls are going to give all the football players attention and then these frat dudes aren't going to get you know any attention yeah. and I'm sure that's their excuse but in reality they were inviting yeah other football players they weren't yeah apparently yeah and like we didn't have sports at my school we didn't even have a football team so like that wasn't an issue I guess we had yeah um and like but, but you know what's so crazy is when I look back on that, there were fraternities that did have people of color, whether, you know, you were, you were black or, and we, we had like, we had certain sororities that were, you know, black women only and things yeah. like that. And like, it's just crazy when I look back at all of our organizations and there were some fraternities, they didn't have a single person of color, they're 100% white dudes. And that was that fraternity. And 
I guess because I was just like sitting there living in that privilege, not even having to ask myself those questions at the time. Yeah. Like, why am I wearing this dress? Like, I just was like, oh, it's like you said, like traditional. I just didn't think anything of it. Yeah. And um, people like just really like idolized like or just like, I don't know, fantasized like Old South and getting to wear the big gowns and dressing up and going to the beach and all this. And it was never this question as to like, what does this represent? What does this represent? And um, and it was sad because, I mean, I was 20 years old, and mm-hmm. I could have easily known that, yeah. especially with, like, just how other schools probably did it. I mean, I could have probably probably Googled that, and it was 2016 that for that formal was banned, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And, like, not that, like, we threw – a lot of people are like, I can't believe, like, they threw that party, like, on campus, like, against the school's rules and broke all that. Like, it's because it, that wasn't a real, really what happened. But, like, if I would have just sent, yeah. like, one little sentence, like, I could have known all of this stuff, and I would have been like, all right, this is, like, terrible. I shouldn't support this. I shouldn't, you know, yeah, sit here and dress up like this. Any, I mean, it's just crazy looking back on it now because it's really scary how – how many kids the even these days like I do I do have hope for the younger generation and whatnot because I do think that they have more access and or or it's just more in their it's it's more in their face more which like I wish just growing up in Georgia and whatnot like I don't know if it's like this everywhere yeah but I, I do have hope for, like, the younger generation thinking, like, they just see it more and they learn at an earlier age and they have more conversations about it and whatnot because, like, where I grew up, like, it just, like, wasn't really a conversation. Even, like, even anyone that I grew up with that was a person of color, they never talked about it either. Yeah. But maybe they never talked about it because they didn't feel like they could talk about it with me, not because it wasn't happening to them, because I'm sure yeah. they felt discriminated against at times in their life, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just nice to know that at least I think it's more, people are more aware of it now and we can have conversations about it at an earlier age and whatnot to where hopefully one day it can't be. Like, hopefully there's not another Rachel five years from now that's just doing Well, no, and it it sounds like the biggest, not the biggest regret, because I think it just sounds like that you were, you were mostly also disappointed in the fact that obviously, yes, you did it, but the fact that you, you did not have the tools, the awareness, the knowledge at the time to know and to push yourself to have gone the extra mile to educate yourself. And listen, that happens to all of us right now. Like that's, Mm -hmm. you know, self-awareness is a journey. Awareness is a journey that we all have to go on. And to your point, it's like racism happened to me or I experienced a lot of racism growing up in school in Texas. And I did not speak up about it. Yeah. <laughs> so to your point, like there are yeah. a lot of, how are you supposed to know what you're doing wrong as a child if the black person's not the one telling yes, you? Yes, I mean, there's just so much to unpack here of because course. it's also like, if you don't have the words to eloquently yeah. describe what's happening and knowing people, you're not in the, you're a minority. So yeah. people in the majority, it's also something to think about. Like this could have happened to any person that was in that photo. Mm-hmm. How do you feel like the other people that have been that were in that photo who went to school with you Mm -hmm. have also been on this journey of unlearning and relearning as well? Yeah. Um, You know, what's so crazy is like when all of that was happening, I had gotten so many DMs from so many different people either saying like. I did this and. That's, this is not what it means. You did nothing wrong. People are trying to twist this into, you know, what fits their narrative. And then I got people, and that was, I will say that was the minority, as loud and as many comments as I got that said that, which, and I literally had to ask those people, I was like, can you please stop saying this because you're wrong? And they still would. But I, I did get a lot more people saying, I did this or something similar or I went to something like this in college whatever it was like they related in some way and they were like I didn't even question 
what this represented and after seeing this now like I'm really like really not only like questioning like what happened but I'm also just like trying to ask myself like where I'm at with all of this and why I never asked myself like what this was about and if this was okay Mm -hmm. and I had a lot of people basically saying like I'm I'm gonna go through this like journey with you because like I can resonate with this and like thank you for like sorry that you know you're going through this but also like this is gonna be good that this was highlighted for people because like believe it or not like there's a lot of people that are in your shoes and hopefully this will open their eyes and wake them up a little bit to like whether they went through the exact same thing whether they went to that formal or whether they just did something similar whether it was like a really messed up like uh social is that what we'd call them yeah like just anything or anything in life like if, if they just didn't ever question like this is racist right and now they can like go through that and be like okay I need to recognize like all of this stuff in my life so that was like the one like little silver lining I guess of everything going on at the time was like if I can help out one person like open their eyes and like help them realize like okay this is like something I have to talk to myself about and the others around me and like really learn through and like learn to unlearn then I that's the one little thing like okay at least I did that you yeah know? that's a that's a perfect segue into my next question because I felt like I think it was probably pretty apparent that on one hand you know you issued several apologies and people were you know probably count count it was counterproductive to what you were trying to do it was like yeah. don't worry you didn't do anything wrong but at the same time on the other side it was mm-hmm. like I know I've participated in yep. equally similar situations and things mm-hmm. and I also want to be on this journey with you so how yeah. did you decide again because I feel like it would have been so easy for you to like just recluse and say this I give up this is just too hard yeah. I can't please everyone Mm -hmm. and meanwhile your whole you know your platform at the time was very dependent on taking a stance one way or the other yeah how did you decide that you wanted to continue to put yourself out there one continue to share your personal journey Mm -hmm. two and decide that you know your network your audience your community was even worthy for you to be able to share now the most intimate personal aspects of your life with them I think there were like a lot of layers to it because at the beginning I did just like want to delete my whole account and like fall off the face of the earth (laughs) like I really considered it a lot um multiple times I was like do I just delete like is this the day um and then especially like when Matt and I like when we had broken up that was actually kind of a turning point for me because that was um, like a week before AFR. And um, that was after I had posted like my written statement because I was pushed to write a written statement and not speak mm. to my, f- like speak to my followers like with my, my face and whatnot. By who? Um, by the show and by producers just because they were like, you could just like look in the corner and people will look too far into it like they kind of like just were like it's easier to write a written statement Mm -hmm. and in my experience I feel like that kind of backfired because a lot of people were like either like wow like she can't even like say it and then the other half was like wow this was actually really well written like props to whoever wrote this for her like no one like actually thought it was even from me And so after, like I said, like wanting to be like, all right, I'm just going to fall off the face of the earth. And then when Matt broke up with me, that's when I was like, what else do I have to lose? Like it cannot get worse from here. There's nothing else I can lose at this point. Like I already lost the one thing like I didn't want to lose. And so that's when I like went rogue and posted that like long video of just me talking like face to face. And then, um, I posted that as I landed in California to film AFR. And I'm not kidding when I say I posted it, got to the hotel. Because, like, I posted that and I posted, like, just resources, like, trying to, like, show people, all the people 
that were like, you did nothing wrong. Like, I was trying to post resources of links for, like, articles and whatnot on my stories just to show, like, for all of those who are saying I did nothing wrong, like, this is why it's wrong. Because I just, like, wanted at least to, like, try and show people, like, this is why it's wrong. Stop saying this is okay. And so I posted all of that. I got to the hotel, took my phone, Mm -hmm. and I didn't see anything. And I talked to you about this. You had your laptop. I didn't have anything, right? I refused to go back in. Without with, something. I, yeah. <laughs> that or you had your phone. That was never going to happen have? to me again. Yeah. Oh, I, I, like, I was never going to, I told them, I was like, you want me to be here for the purpose of a show. I wasn't going to go. I had yeah. no reason being there. Yeah. I was like, fuck this. I don't need to do this anymore. So you had your stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. But I was also, yes. But, but I will say I did bring a burner phone in. My, um, brother's girlfriend like brought in she literally went to walmart and bought me like a pay-as-you-go phone phone. yeah and how do you sneak do do they like pat you down no no no, no, no. but they just like expect you to hand over your electronics when you get there can't you literally hand over i guess i could have handed over the burner phone handed over your sister's electronics and they would have never (laughs) noticed like yeah Yeah. at the end of the day they're not forcing again this is why the show is so in my mind like hilarious and people are like oh the show the show the show they don't force you to do just manipulate you into thinking you have to exactly wow yeah so so um yeah i did that and then through my burner phone um i kind of got the gist of like what people were saying and then um People apparently, like, after that, like, people had been being terrible towards Rachel Lindsay, but then, like, I don't know, like, what fueled the fire if, like, my my statement or anything did, but then I, I asked for my phone back at that point, and I was like, I, I have to say something with all, like, everything going on, and they gave me my phone back, just for, wow. just for an hour, just so I could make a, another statement, just, like, asking people just to, like, lay off of, like, both Rachel and Matt and just everything. I was like, you guys are, like, disappointed in the wrong people. What were people saying to Rachel? It's so ridiculous because they were mad at her for what the host had said. And I'm like, she, what did she do? They were acting like she made him say what he said. Like, I, to this day, I really, I still don't understand because it doesn't make any sense. Like, I can't follow, like, why people were coming for her I mean, because people she's a black are woman of, racist. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's what it comes down to. Because she wasn't that all she was. She interviewed him. That's it. Like, that's all she had. And he walked. Like the host walked right into that. It was crazy. So, just with after all of that, and then seeing still what people had to say, even after I showed them everything, like tr- was trying to get t- through to people. That's when I was like, okay, at least like. I have this platform that, like, I don't deserve right now. I need to, like, at least try to not only, like, show people, like, who I am and whatnot and not, like, who they saw, like, on TV or on, like, their, re- like, their news station with everything that was going on, mm-hmm. but also, like, if I can help, like, a handful of people that are saying, like, I did nothing wrong or they're not understanding or, like I said earlier, like they went through something similar and now they're like, I will go through this with you. Like, you know, what's next? I guess I just, I felt like I owed it to both myself and for those that could relate in some way. Mm. Um, Or even those who were so not even accepting of trying to realize like what was wrong. I felt like I just owed it to everyone just to like try and, talk more on you know what really was going on and like what was wrong with all of this and and like it's it's difficult because I'm obviously not in the position to teach people by any means but I at least want to like I guess throughout the year I just like when I felt like it was okay for me to speak up because there's even some instances like where like it's not even my place to like voice my opinion Mm -hmm. um but I guess just whenever I would, like, read a book or come across things or, like, if, whenever anyone asked me, like, I would try to share, like, one little thing just to, like, try and, like, keep the the conversation going, I guess. Like, hey, like, this isn't over and done with just because it's not in headlines anymore. Right. And then also just, like, having the platform in general, like, I mean, a few months ago I was able to work with um, 
this nonprofit girl movement, which is um, they they highlight on like working with young women of color that are trying to break the space into like entertainment and um, technology and whatnot. And um, it's just nice, like, you know, if I have this platform that I don't deserve, I might as well try and do something good with it. Mm-hmm. So I think after all of that, I just was like, I'm like a broken record now, but like, I just owe it to both myself and for like so many people around me that went through all of this or that are still hurting from this or that still experience, you know, what I did and what other people do every single day, like they're still hurting from it or they're still having to go through it. Like I might as well try and do something about it or just help in any way I can. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like how you worded it. I don't know why people are defending me because even me as a viewer, I was like, I remember one of my friends came to me and was like, I feel really bad for this girl, Rachel. And I was like, why is the host defending and, and yeah, why is so this crazy. host defending someone when whether it was on purpose or whatever your intentions were yeah. there are plenty of women and this is being friends with Bree I was like there are plenty of women that are hurting because of this yeah and, and that's how I felt. you're not the only victim no I wasn't the victim I wasn't that's why I was like, and I still get to this day, it's like, I can't believe you lost the host's job. I still get those questions. I still get those comments. Like, probably today, I, I got that. He's a grown man. I'm like, why are you guys He's acting like I, d- I didn't even know he was doing that interview. Like, my phone was blowing up with everyone else's, you know? Like, I yeah, had no right. idea. But I agree. Like, I thought the same thing. I, I don't know. And, like, like, the ignorant side of me wants to be like, it's because I was, like, the final one, and he was trying to save, like, the fact Space. that like we yeah. were together but yeah he wouldn't have said everything that he said you know if he would have cut himself short right then and there it said the one sentence like let's just let them have their time he could end it like that but obviously that wasn't the case because of everything else that was said afterwards so yeah. that's not the reason Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to part one of our episode with Rachel Kirkconnell. As you can tell, we had an amazing conversation with her. We cannot wait to release part two, which is coming out Tuesday of next week. Tune in. Thank you so much for listening to Yeah, But Who Cares? We care a lot about what you think. And actually, your reviews really help us out. So please like subscribe, follow or comment and leave a review. Even if it's negative, we want to improve. And I'd like to give a big fat disclaimer. We are not professionals. We are not therapists. We are not financial professionals. So please seek out professional help. Um, And this podcast was produced with our friends over at Yeah But Who Cares, including our trusty producer, Serena. Serena. Um, It was also produced in partnership with Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Where can people find us? If you want to find us, you can find us on our personal pages, Bree Springs and Sesana. Yes. But more importantly, you can find Yabba Who Cares on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. Did I miss anything? I, that's actually the most accurate one. Yeah, that's the most, those are the most important ones. Yes. So thank you. Goodbye. See you next week. Kisses. Kisses. <laughs>